Today I get hands-on with the Stochastic RSI technical indicator and talk you through the configuration of each of the settings. Back after this brief message. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. If you're a talented trader looking to attract investor capital to your strategies, DarwinX is the fastest way for you to do this. We enable traders to raise third party investor capital and then charge success fees on high watermark profits. Additionally, DarwinX itself invests in its traders with our seed capital allocation program that allocates up to 90 million euros per year in successful trading strategies. So if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link here, or you can find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. In a few episodes later in the series, I'll be performing analysis to help determine if the stochastic RSI indicator performs more effectively than the standard RSI. So today I'll take you through the stock RSI indicator I'll be using so that you can perform your own analysis at the same time using exactly the same indicator and configuration. This episode is part of the Spotlight on Indicators series. And for those of you that have been following, you'll know that I'm going to be testing out an indicator called the Stochastic RSI by using this in a trading strategy and also specifically comparing it with the standard RSI indicator. And this episode is to introduce the precise indicator that I'll be using for that analysis and backtesting, which means that if you wish to, you can also download the indicator and follow along as I go through that process. Now, the stochastic RSI indicator that I've chosen is by this author here. And I've chosen this one for a number of reasons. Firstly, I've used indicators by this coder previously, and they've always been extremely efficient and by efficient, I mean that they run in a performant way in backtesting, which of course reduces those backtest times, but also runs very efficiently in live trading and therefore means you potentially get away with a lower spec VPS. Additionally, this specific indicator included everything from the core indicator plus some additional features, which to be honest, I won't be using, so I'll be switching those off, but it seems to have the correct parameters for everything that I need to configure. And if you do want to download this, you can do it from this URL here, and I'll also paste this into the description of the video. But please note, I take no responsibility for this. It's not my indicator. So if you do choose to use it, then you need to take full responsibility. So let's take a look at this now on a chart. So the indicator that's already here is the standard RSI based on 14 periods. And like we've seen in previous episodes, this often struggles to get into the overbought and oversold regions, even after fairly significant swings like the ones that you can see here. So let's add the stochastic RSI indicator. And the values that you see here are the defaults. And I would strongly suggest that you change these. So let's go through them one by one. Firstly, we have the number of periods for the RSI component itself. So if this is set to 14, then the values that are then used for the stochastic calculation, which is the next step, will be exactly those that you see on the blue curve here. Since this is the default value for RSI, I'm going to keep this at this value throughout all of my testing. Just like when I looked at the Ichimoku indicator, I didn't really go away from the default values. And I'm taking that same approach here. I don't want to introduce any possibility of overfitting the results that I achieve. And so because of that, I won't be optimizing. Next, you can choose the basis for the RSI calculation. And I'm going to just keep this at the standard of the close price. Now, you'll notice here there are two values for the stochastic number of periods. 
stochastic period one and stochastic period two. The second one here relates to the additional piece of functionality that I said I would not be using. So let me explain how these two operate. Obviously, if we want to use the stochastic RSI, we need to have at least one of these, and this performs a stochastic calculation on the RSI values themselves. Now, the second here performs a further stochastic calculation on the first stochastic values. Now, I don't know about you, but this is getting too complex and too far away from the original price action for me. And I'm struggling to understand what this will actually be achieving. I fully get the rationale behind one, but I will not be using this second stochastic indicator. And so to disable this, you simply need to change the value to one. Now, in terms of the initial stochastic, which I will be using, I'm going to reduce this significantly to a value of 10. And my basis for doing this is on reading from one of the Perry Kaufman books, where he discusses the use of stochastic RSI to get over some of those RSI issues. And he himself suggests a period of 10. And so that's going to be my starting point. Depending on how the testing goes, I'll probably just keep that level all the way through. Next, we have a smoothing parameter. And although 15 periods might be suitable for a 55 period stochastic, it really isn't for a 10 period. And so I'm going to reduce this to a level of five. And I'm going to keep the overbought and oversold levels, which are just the levels where the overbought and oversold lines will be shown on the chart to the defaults of 80 and 20. So let's now take a look at that. And as we've seen in previous episodes, now whenever there's a sizable swing, we will usually get that registered as being either overbought or oversold, whereas with the RSI itself, that didn't happen. So let's just play about a little bit with some of the parameters so that we can understand this better. Let's return the smoothing to the original of 15. And what you can see here is obviously because we're smoothing those values out, we're now hitting the overbought and oversold regions much less often. And in actual fact, it's beginning to look a lot closer to the original RSI. There are some differences, so RSI makes the oversold region here, whereas the stochastic RSI doesn't, and then the opposite is the case here. But overall, this now looks quite similar, and so I think that the smoothing using 15 periods is way too much for the stochastic value of 10 that we're using. So I'm going to return that to the original. Now, there is one thing I want to bring to your attention here. And that is that the lag for the stochastic RSI is really quite minimal. And you might expect that by layering one indicator calculation over another might add to lag in this compared to the RSI. But as you can see, that really isn't the case. And so if we look at the maximum value of RSI here, the maximum value of the stochastic pretty much concurs with that. Likewise, if we look at this value here. So although we have that additional calculation, we haven't introduced any additional lag, even though we have the benefit of these broader swings in the indicator, which is excellent. So once again, this is the location you can download this particular indicator from. Now, in the next episode, I'm going to be designing a trading strategy focusing on overbought and oversold signals and attempting to do that in a fair way that treats both indicators, which obviously have different characteristics, in as much as a like-for-like -like comparison as possible so that I'm not biasing any of the results that are achieved. And this will be the strategy that I later provide the results for, and also any conclusions around which of these indicators appears to be most effective. In the following episode, I'm going to be looking at a second strategy, but still comparing the same two indicators, but this time looking at divergences 
And of course, here I mean divergences between what the indicator is telling us and what the price action is telling us. And then always the most exciting part, we're then going to get into the analysis itself and put these indicators to the test. That's it for this episode, but before you go, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to the channel. And by making sure you also click on the notification bell, will mean that you get notified when new episodes from DarwinX are released. Now, until next time, trade safe.